Well, good morning, New Hope Online. As you can see, I did not want to miss out on the opportunity to worship in my pajamas. So I've got my favorite mug here, I've got my pot of Coca-Cola, and most importantly, I've got some jalapeno cheddar uh, Cheetos here. Can someone say praise the Lord? Hey, if you can hear me and you can see me, will you just give me a thumbs up at home? If you just did that, I hope you know that there's no way for me to know if I can see you or not. We're in the interweb, silly. But today is going to be a good day. I'm ready for it. And uh, I, I was debating whether or not to start out my message with this or not, but uh, I, I kind of had this, this sickening realization last night and, and some disturbing news. Um, about 2.30 in the morning, um, I, I woke up and I had to use the restroom. And so I, I, I go to the bathroom, I lay back in bed, 3 o'clock rolls around, 3.30, 3.45, and, and I just cannot go to sleep, and I've been praying, I've been doing all sorts of things, and I have this realization and this, this subtle thought just come to me, and I thought, oh no, it is slowly but surely happening. I am becoming just like my father. I am turning into an old man. I am, am stinking up here. I've got to use the restroom. Now I can't go back to sleep. So with that realization this morning, that's, that's uh, something I'm just kind of coping with today, so I could really appreciate your, your prayers, because we all know that we don't need two Pastor Weavers running around this world. As I've spent a ton of time on social media just this, uh, this past week, I've been so encouraged by the church body, and I've been so encouraged by you. I've seen so many teachers uh, many of you in our church that are posting and just saying, hey, if you need help with curriculum, if you need help entertaining your kids, if, if your kid needs tutored, reach out to me. I can do online stuff. I'm so encouraged by that. I've, we've had people call the church and say, hey, we can run and get groceries for those shut in. I've, I've seen uh, parents or, or grandchildren sitting outside of nursing homes because the nursing homes are locked down in quarantine and they're talking on the phone through a window to, to be able to visit. I, I've, I've seen uh, people buy baby formula for someone who is sick and couldn't make it to the grocery store. Uh, I had a family contact me asking for another family in our church's number saying, hey, we know this little boy has a suppressed immune system and, and we know he's very susceptible to germs right now. We've got a lot of cleaning supplies and wipes and we just want to bless this family and, and just use wisdom. We trust in the Lord, but we're going to give them all this cleaning supplies. And I'm so encouraged by that. There's a team right now of New Hope ladies and maybe some, some gentlemen making washable face masks for nurses gathering elastic and, and material so that, that this demand of face masks, we can give them to those in the medical field. I am just so encouraged, and I just want to commend you for being the church. I knew that you would rise to the occasion. We are on the front lines of what God is doing. We are not running in fear, but we are running to in faith, and, and I just want to encourage you. I've been so inspired by it. I don't know if I'll receive a check from the government or not, but Elizabeth and I have already discussed it. We've already talked about it. If we get any money, we're just going to pass it on. We're going we're gonna to give it to benevolence because we know that there are people that are in greater need than us, and maybe that resonates with your spirit right now, and that's something that, that you uh, would say, you know what? I'm in the same situation. I've got some, some uh, money in the bank, and, and I don't really need this. And, and, and maybe you would do that, but I'm just so inspired, and I just want to say thank you, New Hope, for being the church. You guys are truly a joy to pastor. Now, one last note before we turn to Scripture and we get uh, going is um, I think, and I, I would sign, be the first uh, sign, signature on the, the petition, that every stay-at-home parent and every school teacher should make at least $250,000 a year. I, I kid you not, because after five days at home with my kids, I could hardly remember what day it was, what their names were, what my name was. I have a newfound appreciation for those staying at home and teachers, so thank you guys. We bless you. This morning, we're continuing in our red-lettered series, which I have thoroughly enjoyed. There's nothing richer than the words that Jesus speaks. And uh, today was supposed to be uh, leading up into our missions convention, but that missions convention, as Pastor Jeff said, has been postponed until October. And when they originally asked me to preach on the 22nd, they said, we want you to preach on 
evangelism, reaching the lost, reaching your neighbors, reaching your friends. I was shocked yesterday when I heard a knock on my door. I went to my door, I opened it up, and there standing on my porch were two Jehovah Witnesses. I said, guys, what are you doing? What's up? He said, we're taking advantage of everybody being home. Now, that didn't really happen, and that's probably a sick joke being cooped up in a house for five days, and that's the best I've got, so you just have to forgive me for that. Now, while this message might not be about evangelism or or reaching your friends, I do think that it's a timely message for anyone who is searching for peace in the midst of this storm. Most of you know people who are currently freaking out. Does your life reflect the madness that surrounds you, or are you an anchor of peace? Are you steadfast? Are you sure and secure with your relationship with God, which gives you a peace that transcends all understanding? See, the way that Christians respond during times of tribulation and trouble can be the greatest testimony of God's character and who he is. Maybe after watching this sermon, God lay someone on your heart and you just need to share this link. You just need to share this message. Or maybe you just simply call up a friend or a coworker or a neighbor and you just simply just share what I've shared with you this morning. Let's be agents of peace because who are your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers? Who are they running to? They run to the government? The government doesn't bring us peace. Are they running to the friends? They're the same ones that they're fighting over toilet paper with. They run to your boss. There's some bosses that are facing hard decisions and doing layoffs. Celebrities, they've got the virus too. Scientists, cover your mouth, quarantine yourself, wash your hands. And while all those might be good things, none of that will bring peace like being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So as much as this isn't an evangelism message, I believe that it's a message that all need to hear. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 14, and I want to bring three things to you this morning that will bring peace in your life. And the first is a promise. John 14, Jesus is talking with his disciples and things are, are starting to heat up. Things are starting to become uncertain. And he's, he's predicted, Jesus has predicted that Peter was going to deny him. He, he has told his disciples, I'm leaving you. I'm going to be, be going away. And where I go, you can't go, but someday you will come. And the disciples are uncertain. They're confused. They're, they're a little bit irritated. They're, they don't know what Jesus is exactly talking about. And there's just some unsettledness in their spirit. And in verses 25 through 27, Jesus says this. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. He's saying I don't, I don't give you peace based on your finances. I don't, I don't give you peace based on job security. I don't give you peace based on circumstances. I don't, I don't give you peace based on whether or not you have enough toilet paper to last you till Christmas or not. My peace I give you, and I do not give it to you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Why don't we have to be afraid? Because Jesus gave us his word. Jesus promised to leave us with his peace How? Through the Holy Spirit. And we all have access right now to the Holy Spirit. And the fruit, we know that the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. See, peace makes the pedestal. It's it's in the top three. Love, joy, and peace. Ask yourself right now, does your life reflect love? Does it reflect joy in the midst of trials? Does it reflect peace? Have you tapped into this promise of peace? See, I wanna take just a moment and, and, and talk about two different types of peace. See, there's a, a difference with peace with God and having peace with God, and then there's a difference of having the peace of God or peace from God, right? Peace with God is when we step into a relationship with Jesus Christ and we say, Lord, God, I believe you are the Lord. I'm stepping under your, uh, your, your, I'm submitting under your authority. I'm stepping under and, and, and submitting myself to you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I need you to save me. And now all of a sudden, you have gone from an enemy with God, being at war with God, the Bible says, and now you are a son or a daughter of God. You are an heir to the throne room. That's peace with God. And I believe that some of you, don't have peace in your heart 
because you have not received the peace with God. You have never asked Jesus to come into your heart. You've never repented or turned from your sins and your ways. At the end of this message, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to receive peace with God, but what comes after peace with God is the peace of God. The peace of God. And this surpasses all understanding. This is what is the anchor of our soul. This is what, what, what brings us to a place that we can sing and we can say, God, I know that I'm gonna see a victory because you are good. I can sing in my heart, it is well with my soul. I can say with confidence because of who you are, Lord, that no matter what happens, if I'm thrown in the fire, if I lose my job, if my, my IRA goes down to nothing, I can say I have a peace of God given to me. Now, I've shared this before, but I'm so thankful that my dad has never made me a promise that he hasn't kept. Not once has he broken a promise to me. When my dad promised me something, he always came through. I remember asking as a, as a kid, I remember saying, Dad, will you promise to pick me up from school? Will you promise that you'll be there after school? And he would say, Austin, I'm 95% sure. I'm 99% sure, but I'm not going to promise you that because I don't know who from the church might die or, or there might be an emergency surgery and I need to go down there. I don't know what exactly my day holds. And, and so he never made me a promise, but he would always say, I will do everything that I can to be there for you. You know, my dad didn't, didn't make me too many promises, but when he did, he followed through. Like my sophomore year of high school, when he promised me that if I joined show choir for two years, he would make it so that I would be able to afford to go to Africa on a hunting trip. In, in June of 2016, almost four years ago, I went to Namibia and, and got to go on that, and that promise that he offered was fulfilled. To this day, if my dad promises me something, I have full confidence that his word is good. Hear me, I find comfort and I find peace in my dad's promises because I have a confidence in my dad's loving character. I have this track record of my dad constantly fulfilling his promises. Why is it so hard to trust in God's promises for us today? In the same way that I've got a track record of a dad who's fulfilled all these promises, we have a track record of a God who has, has a far longer track record than my dad, and he has always been faithful. And we've got no problem looking back to the past and saying, God, I've seen you over here, you've been faithful. I know that you were faithful then, and we've got no promise looking to the future and saying, I know you're going to be faithful. I'm trusting in your future promise of salvation. I trust you then. I trust you in the future. Then why are we not trusting in the promise of peace today? Let's believe that in Jesus' promise of peace. Let's receive it. Let's live by faith Find peace in God's promise. Peace is also a place. Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 91. Probably the most preached on passage last week. Marin shared a verse 9. I'm not going to be reading 9. We'll be in the first few verses there. But as you turn there, I'm, re I'm reminded of a time when I was about five years old. And I went to Epcot at Disney World. Now, Epcot is one of Disney's uh, four main um, theme parks in Orlando, it's, it's the biggest of all of them at 305 acres. And in the middle of this park is this giant pond, almost like a lake. And, and at night, they have something called the illumination ceremony. And I, I'll never forget the first time watching this as a five-year-old. And, and Disney brings out all their big guns. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking fireworks, and not just a few, a ton. And, and, and fire cannons, and LED screens, and lasers shooting through the smoke. And you are right there. I mean, these fireworks are happening in the center of Epcot on that pond, in, in that lake. And I'll never forget that five-year-old me, because I hated it. It scared me to death. I didn't like it at all. As soon as the first, what I would call firework, that's like a weeping willow firework, it's got the real long trails. It kind of looked like, like an umbrella. It shoots and then it just slowly comes down and looks like it's gonna fall and like grab on you. As soon as that first one went off, I started bawling. 
my dad took me and, he, and we ran over to a gift shop. And he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, Dude, we're going we're gonna to get caught on fire, Dad. Now, hindsight, you know, running to a wooden building for safety isn't the smartest thing. It's like, oh, hey, there's a really nice, neatly stacked pile of dry sticks. Let's go hide under that. Fire's falling from the sky. Didn't make a whole lot of sense um, now. But as soon as I stepped into that gift shop, as soon as my father ushered me in there, I received this peace, and, and my tears stopped coming down my cheeks. My heart slowed down and, and returned to a normal ryth- rhythm, and, and I found peace in the shelter of that gift shop. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4, talks about a place that brings us peace. It says this, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely will he save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. See, Psalm 91 talks about the a person who dwells in the shelter or dwells in the secret place. And that is the person who receives rest. You see, dwelling is much different than a drive-by encounter. Dwelling is not just um, just kind of scooping into church or scooping into the presence of God. It's actually resting in the presence of God. It is coming and submitting under that. We don't just find our consolation, but we find our habitation in the shadow of God. Dwellers are the ones who receive the promise of protection, not visitors. Many of you at home right now are, are watching this, and you're really missing your church family. And I know that I'm, I'm missing um, you guys too. But the amazing thing is that God is omnipresent, meaning he is at all places and all times. And, and if the shadow of God is here at church and you feel that warmth, you feel that security coming together, did you know that you can make your home a place where the shadow of God rests and resides? I wanna encourage you, what would happen if when when you started praying, you started getting into the word of God, you started really going after God in your house, you started actually praying with your spouse and for your spouse out loud in front of them. You started praying with your kids, you started doing family devotions. Now all of a sudden, you have created the shadow of God under the wings of his protection at at your house. See, the church, you've seen it posted online, the church is not about a physical building. We are united by the Spirit of God, but God offers us his protection because he is at all places at all times. In verse 4, we get this beautiful picture of a mother bird covering her babies with her wings, protecting them from, from prey or the elements of a storm. Are you taking time to dwell with the Lord? How much news, ask yourself, how much news have you spent reading this week versus how many promises of God have you been reading in the Word of God? How many shows have you watched on Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu or whatever it might be versus how many times have you just turned on some worship music and just experienced his presence, his shadow, his wings cover you, protect you, and usher in the the most calming, incredible sense of peace that you could ever have. Some of the most incredible times that I've ever experienced in worship or with the Lord are not at church. It's not with other people. It's in a tree stand when I'm miles away from other people. It's in my truck when I'm driving with no music on or or nothing else and I'm just praying and I'm just worshiping whatever comes to mind and God's presence just begins to invade this place and wherever I am, let's be dwellers Let's invite God's presence into our homes. And as we dwell in the shelter, as we nuzzle under his wings, we can have confidence that God is interposing between us and our adversaries. We know that God is fighting our battles. This is how I fight my battles. I know that I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my fear. I know that I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my anxiety and my depression. I know that I'm surrounded by you. And I'm going to do everything that I can to usher in your presence so that you can hold me close. 
let's be dwellers. Being a father is an amazing experience. And with some of you being quarantined at home, we might have some new first time fathers come December. And uh, if, if that's uh, you, congratulations. If you're trying to get pregnant, you better do it soon because that tax deduction with the way the economy's looking might come in pretty nice uh, end of December. So we got about nine months um, and uh, you, you better just hurry up. So. But in all seriousness, being a dad is great. And, and I don't know of any parent that would wish their child to become hurt. But I can tell you this, when my kids get hurt, it is one of the greatest feelings in the world as a dad to be able to reach down, to scoop them up, to hold them close, put their head against my chest, say, it's going to be okay, console them, hold them tight, rock them, it's going to be okay, you're going to be okay, dad is with you. I remember as a kid, my dad would do that whenever I was hurt. Now, he was the overreactive parent. He was like the type of parent where if I bumped my head, he was checking me for a, a brain bleed. My mom, on the other hand, you know, I'd, I'd fall down. She's like, I'll oh, just rub some dirt in it, you know. No, I'm, I'm just teasing, Mom. Both of my parents, I found great peace and comfort in their arms. And, and I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but it, it's one of the most assuring things just to, to be nuzzled into someone's loving arms. See, peace is a promise, and yes, it's a place, but most importantly, peace is a person. Peace boils down to a person. See, you can't have a promise without a person. Because a promise is only as good as the person who gives it. And we can be thankful that the person of Jesus Christ who is perfect in all of his ways, is the one who gives us a promise. And, and the place that scripture leads us to is under the protective wings of a person, of God himself. About 2,700 years ago, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about a man who would be sent to us. He's speaking of Jesus in Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and of the greatness of his peace, there will be no end. See, God sent his son, his one and only son, to the earth so that whoever believes in him might not perish but receive everlasting life. God sent his son so that we might have peace with God. God sent his son so that we might not just have peace with God but we would have the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Some of you right now, your, your heart is full of fear and anxiety and, and, and uncertainty and I want to extend an invitation for you to receive the peace of God that transcends all understanding. For as great of a joy as it for me to pick up my kids and pull in their, their head close and, and, and hold them close and say, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be all right, I'm here, dad's with you, I've got you close, everything's gonna be fine. Our heavenly father finds great joy when we are in distress and we come running to him and he scoops down and he picks us up and he draws us close and we get this beautiful picture of a father pouring out his heart, pouring out his love on his child. You are a beloved son or daughter of God. Some of you don't even know that yet. Some of you are, are in this state where you don't have peace with God yet. You haven't stepped into that relationship. Your eyes haven't been opened that you might see that God has called you and, and chosen you and is asking you to step into a relationship with him. And in a minute, I'm going to give you the opportunity to have peace with God. But others of you, you guys know that if you were to die, you'd wake up tomorrow in heaven. But right now, you're just really struggling to receive that promise of peace. And you're not really experiencing the peace of God. The peace of God runs deeper than your bank account. It runs deeper than your joblessness, deeper than your sickness. It runs deeper than anything this world could throw at you. It's a river that never runs dry and is being made available to you today if you would simply receive it. Right now where you are, would you just close your eyes? I just want you to, to tune out distractions. 
just, just close your eyes and allow God just to begin to speak to you. Do you have peace with God? Answer this question right here. If I were to die today, would I wake up in heaven tomorrow with my Lord, my creator, my savior? If you can't confidently answer that in a moment, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your life, make the best decision that you've ever had, and step into a relationship with Jesus Christ. She continued with your eyes closed. Just, I believe that there are many people here that need to return to the promise, that need to return to the place, that need to return to the person of peace. And I urge you to return to Jesus. Come under his wings. It's a place of humility, but it's also a place of security. Step into his promise. It's a source of comfort. If you are struggling with having peace, right now in your heart, would you just simply repeat this prayer after me? Jesus, I need your peace. I give you my future and all that it holds. I trust in your perfect and sovereign plan. Would you rid me of all fear and anxiety and replace it with joy and your peace and your love? I choose today to step into your shadow under your wings. I give you the reins of my heart and my mind, Lord. They are yours. You are so much greater than my trial, so I choose to trust in you. Give me faith that is unwavering so that I might rejoice through my pain and suffering. I receive your promise. I receive it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart. You've never repented of your sins. You've never turned of your ways. You're feeling anxious. If you were to get this virus that's going around and you were to die, you don't know without a shadow of a, of a doubt that you would wake up in heaven. I wanna give you the opportunity right now where you are to make this personal commitment to the Lord. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me, saying, Jesus, I pray that you would save me, forgive me of my sin. I put my faith and my trust in you. Enter my heart, God, and change it today. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. So in humility, I call on your name to be saved. In Jesus' name, I put my trust and hope, and I pray, amen. If you prayed that, I want you to do something. On the screen is the email address to the church, info at newhope.church. And I want you to send an email to us saying that you asked Jesus for the first time into your heart, and we're gonna mail you something to help you in your faith walk. Yeah, we can't meet, we can't get together, but we would love to talk with you on the phone. We'd love to email, we'd love to text. However you want to communicate, we want to ensure that you are on the right path. Would you just stand wherever you are? If you're in bed, get out. If you're on the couch, get up. If you're at the kitchen table, the living room, just stand up right now. We're gonna end declaring this song. We are gonna end declaring that God, we proclaim and we see a victory because the battle belongs to you. And you're gonna take what the enemy has meant to evil and you're gonna make families strong again. You are gonna take marriages and you are gonna make them strong again. You are gonna raise up a next generation of children that love you with all of their hearts and all of the extras and everything that we do, it doesn't depend on that, but they have a deep rooted relationship in you because God, you are working all things together for your good. We declare it because your word declares it and we stand on that truth today. So as I pray, we just enter into a time of worship. Lift your hands, receive his peace, receive his joy. Thank you, Jesus. Enter our hearts, God. We declare this right now, the weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. 
And when the darkness falls, it won't breathe it. For the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh my God. Oh my God will never fail. Yeah. Oh, you never fail. My God will never fail. Sing, there is power. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus. And every war he wages, yes, he Lord. will win. Yes, God. And I'm not backing down from any giants. Because I know how this story ends. Oh, yes, I know how this story ends. God, we proclaim that. That's not just lyrics, but that is our anthem and our cry this morning, that we will see victory through this song. Let your church rise up. Let them be strengthened, encouraged today, God. I pray for anyone who needs peace, that they would find it in you, our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, you are. Amen. Amen.